Come with me, Jake Turner, as I travel the back roads talking with corn and soybean experts about best practices in pest control, ag issues, and how growers can get more from every acre. All you need is a minute. Properly identifying weeds can be very challenging, especially at early stages. So I'm headed to Columbia, Missouri to talk with Dr. Kevin Bradley, state extension weed scientist at Mizzou, who will put me to the test with an ID challenge. So follow along and let's see if you can get the answer before I do. Hey, Kevin, thanks so much for taking the time to talk with us today. Glad to do it. So we're out here talking about weed ID practices. Uh, could you tell me something about this field we're in? Well, this is uh, just one of our experiments, and uh, this is an example probably of what we don't want growers to do. Uh, so we have a, a pretty high weed density out here. This field has not received any pre-emergence residual herbicides, which would uh, uh, be a, one of our first recommendations. And so the result is, you know, all these uh, just tremendous mat of weeds out here, uh, very dense, thick cover that really needs an, a post-emergence application. So it's at the stage where a post-emerge application like Marvel and a glyphosate, that'd be in order? Absolutely. Uh, we're there and uh, we, we need to get out here and, and if, we're, if this is a grower's field, absolutely, we're, we're wanting to make that application today. Now what's your rule of thumb about what stage of weed growth you want to make that application? Usually we say, in, in soybeans in particular, uh, uh, we want to go with uh, four inches or less in height, and uh, often the weeds are actually getting sprayed much higher than that. Uh, and that's unfortunate because yield loss can occur in response to that. And so four inches or less in height, if you take a soda pop can and stick it down on the ground and you see weeds that are that tall or less, uh, it's time. That, that's, a good, that's a good indicator of, of what four inches is right there. Now, when they're at that stage, it's a little harder to identify one weed from another. They're not mature with their characteristics that are easy to identify them. So what are best practices in doing weed ID? Well, you know, certainly they're, they're harder to, to ID at the, at the early stages. So uh, we're looking at things like leaf uh, shape. Uh, we're even looking at cotyledons on the smallest leaves that are coming up. Uh, leaf arrangement along the stem. Uh, whether they're arranged opposite from one another or alternately. In the case of grasses, we're looking at how wide the leaves are, what kind of ligules there are, and uh, presence of hairs, absence of hairs. So there's a lot of features, but really it can be boiled down into 10 or 12 things that, you know, if you've got a pretty good handle on that, you're probably going to be able to ID your weed. What are some of the resources that are out there to help a grower make a correct ID? Well, uh, historically, we've had a number of uh, different books from universities or different weed scientist authors, uh, field guides. I mean, we have plenty of, of actual books in your hand, you know, kind of thing from the University of Missouri and, you know, just about all land grant universities have their different kinds and uh, different ones. And uh, there's nothing wrong with those and they still get used a lot. I think what we're transitioning to, uh, in recent years, and I expect even more in the future, is some of the apps and the online resources and things like that. University of Missouri has a great app, right? University of Missouri does. We, we have a Weed ID app. There are not very many of them out there. There's more and more coming, and we do have one, and we hope it's useful to, uh, to producers throughout the U.S. I've seen it. It's a great app. And then also Ag PhD and FMC have a great field guide app with some excellent photos to help ID these weeds, particularly at these early stages. Sure, sure. So I'm not real surprised to see that there's uh, water hemp here since we're in Missouri, but I understand you have a weed garden that's got a whole lot of varieties of weeds. Is that correct? We do. We've got uh, all kinds of weeds out there for the general public and you to see and uh, love to take you out there and see if you can uh, ID some of them. That sounds like a weed ID challenge. Absolutely. Let's go do it. All right. So Kevin, this is the weed garden. Can you tell me about it? Yeah, so we have about 100 different species here uh, that we've planted. We know where every weed is, and uh, we use this area all the time for training events, uh, training students, training uh, farmers, training retailers. Well, you've got quite a few here, so I guess you've got some you could pull for that weed challenge, huh? We've got some good ones for you. All right, I've stalled long enough. Let's get to it. All right, Kevin, I'm ready to take the challenge. All right. What you got for me? 
Well, I'll start you out with the easiest one of all. Just pulled this out of the field a, a little bit ago. It's starting to wilt a little bit. Well, thank you for starting us <laughs> off easy. Giant ragweed, did I get it right? Yeah, you got it right. Well, let's talk about why. Uh, we got our leaf shape we got to talk about, and this one has on all of the leaves kind of irregularly lobed leaves, and here's three. We've got as many over here. I think we got one that's five. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. We got uh, petioles. Right. Um, we got this rough, hairy surface on our stem. It's grooved down here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, those would be the identifiers I'd use if I wasn't sure it was giant ragweed just by looking at it. Anything else I should be checking out? Well, you're right on. I mean, uh, we obviously want to note uh, uh, leaf arrangement, so oppositely arranged leaves. One of the more difficult things about giant ragweed early on, I mean, at this stage it's pretty easy, but it can have either, uh, at least usually initially, some of the early leaves may not be lobed at all mm -hmm. to three to five lobes. And so it's got kind of a, a variable uh, leaf uh, uh, shape and habit there, but uh, when it gets to this size, just a, you know, a general robust uh, nature of this plant, it help, it's, it's pretty easy to identify. We want to treat them before they get this big. Bit. Oh yeah, we're not going <laughs> to control these, yeah. All right, well thank you for starting me off easy. Um, so bring her up, what's the next one? All right, another one that, uh, you know, sometimes can get confusing. We do have a few seedlings here that, uh, uh, or more common of what we might be seeing out in the field when we want to treat. Okay, so this one's got kind of a a heart shape almost to it. Yeah, I mean, kind of. It's kind of we call that lanceolate. There okay, you go. so like a arrowhead shaped almost leaf. So this is lanceolate or arrowhead shape. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, it has a petiole. Mm -hmm. It's got uh, you know the petioles have kind of an interesting color to them. Uh, I'm, I'm tempted to say it's in the amaranth family. Am I right? Well, no. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, amaranths will have, and one of the key things here to look at is the cotyledons. Uh, amaranths will have some linear cotyledons like this, and that's what we call these, linear cotyledons. Uh, and so uh, the purple spotted stem, you know, that's just kind of one of these unique characteristics of this particular weed. Uh, but this is actually cocklebur, and cocklebur uh, is one of the few with these kind of real waxy, uh, really kind of linear, broad, linear uh, cotyledons like that. And then the purple sto spotted stems kind of help as well. So very common, one of our common weeds that we encounter in, uh, in throughout the U.S., but certainly in Midwest production system as well. And I would say it's sometimes confused, as you can see why here. Uh, with uh, with this weed. And this weed, we were just talking about how the leaves aren't quite as lobed, and we got an even spacing here, or an opposite spacing here with our leaves, so I'm gonna say this is giant ragweed also. Very, very similar, and in, in it, these are some species that all can be confused, which is why I'm sharing them with mm -hmm. you. This is actually a sunflower, and I made it even harder because the cotyledons are gone on this sunflower, and that would have helped you out a lot. Uh, but giant ragweed, uh, common cocklebur, sunflower, are three species that a lot of people can get mixed up on at these early stages of growth. Usually we go by um, cotyledons, um, some of these unique characteristics like purple spotted stems or hairs in the case of sunflower here. Uh, it's just covered with hairs all up and down the stem. Um, and uh, this would have just round uh, cotyledons compared to this. And so, you know, there's a number of weed ID guides that'll show those characteristics uh, very well. And, and, uh, but this is real world out in the field, what you're gonna see in a lot of cases. Now this, uh, you know, initially you might say grass because it's so early on, but I'm, I'm gonna take a jump. I'm gonna try and see if I can get on top of it. We got three leaves coming out, not two. And I'm feeling right down here and I'm feeling the triangular shape. So uh -huh. I'm gonna say this is a sedge. You're right on. So. I don't know which sedge, but I know at least it's a sedge. Yeah, that's, that's good, that's usually good enough. So mostly what we have in uh, at least the Midwestern US and uh, 
most of the U.S. overall is yellow nut sedge. And uh, but you are exactly right. And you and you went to the the main thing that you need to tell the difference because this is not a grass. This is uh, uh, not going to be controlled the same way as a grass is. So that triangular stem is key there, and uh, that will tell you it's a sedge every time. Now this one again is pretty early on, but I, I'm not feeling that triangle down yeah, here. Yeah. So I'm gonna say it's a grass. You bet. Is this, uh, I know you, you guys got yellow foxtail on yeah. here, Yeah. Right? Is this yellow foxtail? Yeah, so we actually have a number of these here, and uh, yellow foxtail tends to come on a little bit later in the season, and, uh, um, Often they'll have a purplish base like you see here, flat, you know, really distinct flat stem. Uh, you kind of see this tillering habit that's starting to form already. Mm -hmm. And then one of the keys, and this is sometimes requires a hand lens or depends on how good your vision is, but uh, if you pull that leaf back, you see all these whispery hairs near the leaf base. Uh, that's going to help you tell it's uh, yellow foxtail every time. I'll tell you, Kevin, I'm going to take that tip about the magnifying glass. <laughs> um, all right, so you got a couple here. And uh, <laughs> all right, I'm looking at these two together. And if this one wasn't next to it, I would think this was morning glory. Mm -hmm. But this is morning glory, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly and right. And because of the, the leaf shape we got here, it's got the petioles, uh, it's got an alternate uh, stem arrangement, alternate uh, uh, leaf arrangement. So I'm, I know there's morning glory, but <laughs> that throws me off because I'm looking at this and I had a guessed morning glory until I saw it next to it. So what have we got going on here? Well, this is just another one of those things and you need to, to always look at, you know, that's a, a perfectly, if I had to say what has a heart-shaped leaf, that, mm -hmm. that, is, that is it right there. And then, Oh, you know, don't discount the, the little stuff. So this this leaf is very velvety. And uh, and I think you just gave me a prompt, right? Yeah. So leaf surface is the key to identifying velvet leaf. Yeah, you know, it's just covered with soft hairs and really yeah. distinct round heart-shaped leaves. And this one, okay, looking at it, it's alternate. It's growing up here, so I'm gonna say mare's tail. Yeah, so, you know, mare's tail, uh, we often don't even uh, ID seedlings very often because uh, it's just uh, not what we're used to seeing, but this is a young mare's tail plant and uh, the, the leaves all bunched together. No petiole? Uh, really, usually not much, if any, petiole. Uh, but at this stage, I think maybe we don't need to overthink it. Most growers know what mare's tail is because it looks like a Mare's tail. Mare's tail. <laughs> What's another name for that? Horseweed, yeah. Same reason. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, I, I maybe uh, got a C on here for you? I think we can give you a C. <laughs> hey, uh, you have grad students, right? Yep, sure so do. So you're used to giving extra credit, huh? Every now and then. I'm asking for some. All right, I've got something for you. Our last challenge here, tell me what you think of these two. Are they uh, the same weed, are they different? Uh, what are they? All those kinds of things. Okie dokie. All right, well, I see why you mentioned the same weed uh, because you got a similar placement on your leaves. They got similar petiole size. Yeah. Uh, you got some coloring traits that might be the same. You got this underside that's different color from the top. This one's just flat out kind of a reddish purplish kind of a color. Um, but you know, I'm gonna look at these leaf shapes. Cause there's somebody, somebody over here is pretty smart and I've been listening to him. So I'm gonna say, this is based on this irregular leaf shape here. I'm gonna say this is your lamb's quarter. Right on. So uh, that's exactly right. And one of the things we haven't talked a whole lot about is uh, uh, the leaf margins. And uh, we call these serrated leaf margins. They have some, uh, uh, you know, different uh, appearance or not entire, like uh, most all the other weeds that we've uh, been looking at today with these, for example, back to the sunflower, you know, it's an entire leaf margin versus having some serrations to it. And it, both of these have that. So another thing about lamb's quarters is they usually have like a purple rim or purple margin around the outside or red or purple, whatever you like to call it. But uh, uh, you're exactly right. This is lamb's quarters, a very common 
uh, summer annual that we have. All right, so this is a nightshade. This is actually Eastern Black Nightshade, and uh, one of the things about it is, uh, first of all, the leaf undersides are very distinctly purple, and then again, it has those leaf serrations we were talking about. Well, thanks so much for giving me a chance to bump up my score and everything you taught us today. Glad to do it. Take care. As Dr. Kevin Bradley showed us, using proper weed ID techniques during early stages of weed development is critical to achieving optimal weed control. Apps like the University of Missouri Weed ID and FMC-sponsored Ag PhD Field Guide are helpful tools for growers and retailers. This is Jake Turner, reminding you to be safe out there. Until I see you next time. <laughs>